Hello everyone and welcome to my study on Romans chapter 6. Today we're going to be talking about yield yourself to grace or law. And again, I'm going to be taking most of my study from the Romans class I took taught by Lauren Larson from the Jimmy Swaggart Roman commentary and from other commentaries. Romans chapter 6 verse 15 through 19 says, what then shall we sin, because we're not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourself servants to obey, his servants you are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or obedience unto righteousness? But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. Being then made free from sin, ye become the servants of righteousness. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members' servants to uncleanliness and to iniquity and to iniquity, even so now yield your members' servants to righteousness and to holiness. The question in verse 15, what then? Paul is going back to the first question uh, he asked in verse 1 of this chapter. Shall we sin because we're not under the law but under grace? Paul has convinced us that a lifestyle of habitual sin is not compatible with one whose life is changed by grace. But what about an occasional sin here and there? If we're under grace and not law, must we be so concerned about a little sin here and there? <clears throat> Absolutely. Kenneth Wu said in the verb in verse 1 is in the present subjunctive, speaking of habitual continuous action. The verb in verse 15 is in the aorist subjunctive, referring to a single act. And again, Paul is going back to the first question he asked in verse 1. And again, Paul's answer is God forbid. Okay, verse 16 says, No, ye not that to whom you yield yourself servants to obey, his servants you are to whom you obey, whether of sin unto death or obedience unto righteousness. That word servants in the Greek is doulos and means slave. So it should have been translated slaves. And it means one whose will <clears throat> is swallowed up in the will of another and refers to one who is bound to another in bands so strong that only death can break them. The believer's identification with the Lord Jesus in his death broke the bands which bound them to Satan, and now they are bound to the Lord Jesus as his bond slave in the band so strong that only death can break them. And since Christ is the believer's life and he will never die again, the believer is bound to him forever as long as their desire is to serve God. Amen. <clears throat> that statement, whom you yield yourself slaves to obey, his servants you are to whom you obey. Whatever, you're, whatever you present yourself to obey, you become its slave. For example, if I obey my appetite constantly, I'm a slave to it. So we have a choice in our slavery, sin leading to death or obedience leading to righteousness. One way or the other, we will serve somebody. The option to live our life without serving either sin or obedience is not an option for us. So the believer was a slave of Satan before salvation. But since they are now saved, they are a slave of the Lord Jesus Christ. They have now changed masters. Amen. Okay, verse 17 says, But God be thanked that you were the servants of sin, but you have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. That statement that you were servants of sin speaks of a past tense because we have been freed from our slavery to sin. He also says that we have been set free by faith. 
which he describes as obedience from the heart. The faith is put in God's word, which he describes as that form of doctrine. All in all, the point is clear. You put your faith in God and his word, and now you're set free. Now live every day constant with that freedom. Amen. That statement obeyed from the heart is a wonderful description of faith. It shows that faith comes from the heart and not only the mind. It shows that faith results in obedience because if we really believe something, we will act according to that belief. That form of doctrine, this phrase is a part of a beautiful picture. The word form describes a mold used to shape molten metal. The ideal is that God wants to shape us. First, he melts us by the work of the Holy Spirit and the word of God. Then he pours us into his mold of truth, that form of doctrine, and shapes us into his image. Clark said that form of doctrine here, Christianity is represented under the notion of a mold or die and to which they are cast and, and, and from which they took the impression of its excellent excellence. The figure upon this die is the image of God, righteousness and true holiness, which was stamped on their souls in believing the gospel and receiving the Holy Spirit. The words refer to the melting of metal, which when it is liquefied is cast into the mold that it may receive the impression that is sunk or cut into the mold. And therefore the words may be literally translated into which mold of doctrine you have been cast. They are melted down under the preaching of the word and then were capable of receiving the stamp of its purity. Kenneth Wu said, Paul thanks God that whereas before salvation we were slaves of the evil nature, but in salvation we were delivered, in other words, handed over to the teachings of grace so that we become slaves of righteousness. Amen. Okay, verse 18 says, being then made free from sin, you became the servants of righteousness. That statement, being made free from sin, means, means being free from the sin nature and that it has no more power over the believer. And I said in our previous study, there is no such thing as sinless perfection. We all, we all have our shortcomings and flaws and even occasional failures. But Romans chapter 6 and verse 14 says that sin shall not have dominion over you. Amen. So sinless perfection in this body is an illusion. Because 1 John 1 and 8 makes this clear. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Kenneth Wu said because of the frailty of man. The Christian at infrequent intervals does yield to the evil nature in sin. But the point is, God has so constituted them that they need not do so. Amen. Okay, verse 19 says, I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as you have yielded your members, servants to uncleanliness, and to iniquity unto iniquity. Even so, <clears throat> excuse me, even so now, yield your member servants to righteousness unto holiness. That statement, I speak after the manner of men. Because of the infirmity of your flesh, actually has Paul apologizing for the illustration drawn from human relations of that of a slave. But he says that he was forced to do so because of the frailties of the flesh. The, the ideal is that these Romans, to who he was writing, 
plus all of the human family and for all time had been slaves to the passions of sin before their conversion. The flesh being what it is, is very quickly enslaved to evil passions. For instance, alcohol, drugs, gambling, lust, hate, anger, greed, jealousy, etc. Amen. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, that statement. For as ye have yielded your member servants to uncleanliness and to iniquity unto iniquity, speaks of their lives as well as all others before coming to Christ. Uncleanliness speaks of moral impurity, which plagues the human race. This is the very opposite of righteousness, which speaks of moral perfection, and which only God has and only God can give. Okay, the manner in which Paul uses that statement, iniquity unto iniquity, speaks of the destructive power of sin. In other words, one iniquity leads to another and making it impossible for one to break free out of such bondage, at least with their own capabilities. It just cannot be done. Only the power of God can set the captive free. Amen. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> then he says, even so, now yield your members' servants to righteousness unto righteousness. Presents the same principle as iniquity and iniquity, but in the very opposite direction. So Paul is telling the believer that since the power of this sin nature is broken, they no longer have to yield their physical members to unrighteousness but can now yield them as slaves to righteousness unto holiness. Amen. <clears throat> okay, so in this passage of Scripture, verses 15 through 19, just paraphrasing this, Paul is saying, no, it is not okay to sin a little here and there because we are now under grace and that you better know that whoever you yield yourselves to obey you become its slave. So we have a choice in our slavery, sin leading to death or obedience leading to righteousness. And one way or the other, we will serve somebody. The option to live our life without serving either sin or obedience, <coughs> excuse me, is not an option to us, amen. But thanks be to God that he saved us and we are no longer slaves of sin any longer because we have been set free by faith because we have believed in the redemptive plan of God. We have believed in that form of doctrine, that message, the gospel of Jesus Christ, how that he came to this earth to go to the old rugged cross and lay down his life and pour out his precious blood on that cross for our sins, to pay the great price that was needed to reconcile mankind back to God. How he was placed in the tomb and how he arose on the third day and ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God and is alive forevermore. And we believed from the heart and we asked Jesus to be our Lord and Savior we have been set free and we are no longer slaves to sin and we are now slowly being formed into the image of our Lord Jesus Christ, all because of the grace of God and believing in the gospel. Amen. And even though our flesh is weak, since the power of the sin nature is broken, we no longer have to yield ourselves to unrighteousness, but we can yield ourselves to righteousness unto holiness. Amen. And that concludes this lesson on Romans chapter 6, verses 15 through 19, um, entitled, Yield Yourself to Grace or Law. And the Lord willing, we will pick back up in our next study on this subject. God bless.